Let's go ahead and try to draw actual cylinders on isometric paper. And let's start with this cylinder right here. And anytime you're drawing any kind of circle on isometric paper, you really want to start with the center point. And so a center point on the top view is going to have a depth and a width. And so I'll start right here. I'll give it a depth and a width as a center point, And I will look at the measurement of the circle. It says it has a diameter of 1.5, which I know is 6 squares. And so if it has a diameter of 6, that means it has a radius of 3. That means from each direction, from the center, it goes out 3 squares. And so I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to draw myself a straight line. I'm going to go out in each direction. So 1, 2, 3, and add that straight line. 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to check for my corners. And I'm going to mark my corners, since I don't have a square to assist me this time, with a red mark, just so you can see it. But I'm going to look where these two lines will intersect, and they will intersect right here. This makes an acute angle. And then where do these two lines intersect? Well, they intersect right here, and that will be a very obtuse angle. Okay, and these two lines right here will intersect here. That is an obtuse angle as well. And then these two lines will intersect right here. And that's a very acute angle. And this will tell me which way my circle elongates. And so you can draw these angles if you want to. I'm just drawing it so you can kind of picture it with me. But I'm going to connect these two lines with a curve. And will it be a sharp curve or an almost straight curve? And the answer is, well, we have an obtuse angle, which is an almost straight angle. And so we will have an almost straight curve. And so I will leave these lines and start curving it with an almost straight curve. And then I will come over here and look at this angle. Okay, this is a very sharp angle, which means I'm going to curve very sharply, kind of like the ends of an egg. You should be able to distinguish the difference between these two curves. One is much sharper and one is much more straight of a curve when you are looking at a circle on isometric paper. And so if we look over here, this angle would be a very sharp curve as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave this line and begin to leave this line as well. But again, this curve should be a very, very sharp curve because the angle is sharp. And then this angle right here is a very obtuse angle, which means we're going to have an almost straight curve at this end of our circle. And so I can't stress this enough, when you're drawing a circle, I'm not grading you on your ability to draw a perfect circle. I'm grading you on your ability to see the direction of elongation. This is elongating left to right and foreshortening up and down. And I'm also looking to see if you recognize the center of the circle versus the radius. And so if you look, I went from my center out three and out three. And if you can do both of those things correctly, then you're probably drawing your circle pretty well. But now I'm going to show you something new on a circle. How do we draw the edges of a cylinder, and how do we draw that bottom partial curve? And so we say the height is 1.5, which is 6. Instead of finding where you're at and going down 6 on the edges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume the bottom of this curve has a center that is 6 below the top of this circle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my center point and I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I'm going to draw a parallel center mark for this circle up here at the top. And then I'm going to assume that it has the exact same radius, that it's a uniform cylinder. And I'm going to go out 3 in every direction. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I'm also going to go out to the back as well, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. And I'm not going to be able to see the back of this curve, but I will need those lines to help me sketch out the entire curve that I want to sketch. And so the first thing I need to do is I need to recognize, well, this part is easy. This front part over here is just a curve, and it is an almost straight curve because it's connecting at an obtuse angle. And so that part was easy. But back in these directions, I'm going to see the front of this curve, but not the back. I'm not going to be able to see 
back here. And so the question becomes, where does the curve stop and where does this straight line, this edge of this cylinder begin? And so to figure this out, I'm actually going to draw the entire curve, but I'm going to draw it as what we call a construction line. I'm going to draw it with a very, very light line. And I recognize that this side over here is still the acute side and it's still the sharp side. And so as I leave, I'm going to draw this very, very light line with a sharp, sharp curve. And so you should be able to barely see it as opposed to the lines that represent the object of our shape. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to leave this. And I'm going to make sure I draw a very sharp curve off of these lines. But I'm going to make sure that it's light, light, light. And if I draw it too dark, that's fine. I can go back and I can erase it a little bit. The point is, is I want to barely be able to see these curves. They are just there to assist me to draw the rest. And of course, we don't need to draw back here because we won't be able to see this curve back here at all. And so to figure out where this stops being a curve and starts being a straight line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my handy dandy straight edge. And I'm going to make it parallel to my height lines. And so I don't want it on a height line, then it doesn't necessarily hit my edge. But I want it to be parallel to my height lines, and then I want it to touch both my top curve and my bottom curve. And so if it touches my top curve and my bottom curve, and it's parallel to my height, then I know I did a pretty good job. And then what I'm going to do is while it's parallel to my height and touching both my bottom curve and my top curve, I'm going to connect these two with what we call a tangent. And everything in front of this tangent will become part of my curve, and everything behind it is just construction line. You can erase it or you can leave it there. It doesn't really matter. And so what is the tangent? The tangent is the end of the circle. It is the direction of the circle at a given point. And so right here at this point, it is going straight up and down. Here at this point, it would be going this direction, but I don't want to go from that point. I want to find the tangent in the up and down direction. So what point does it stop going to the right and start going back to the left? Or what point does it stop going to the right this direction and then start going back to the left? Well, right there at that point. And so that ends up being my tangent. So again, I want to line my straight edge up parallel to my height lines, but also make it touch the top and bottom curve and connect it. And this is where it changes directions. It stops being a curve and starts going down in a straight line here as well. It stops being a curve and turns into a straight line. This is the change in direction point or our tangent of our circle. And you can keep that construction line or you can erase it. It doesn't really matter. It was just there to help us sketch the entire cylinder.